Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. I would say perhaps one of the most exciting live streams we've done in a long time. We have the pleasure of bringing and hosting the CEO of Oxico Resources, a interesting, the most interesting mining company, I would say, in North America at the moment, a company they've been looking forward to for the past eight months to speak to. Uh, Pierre, a warm welcome to you. It's been long overdue and it's a great pleasure to have you. So hopefully we can have a chat about Oxico and its future developments. Wonderful. Thanks for having me, Sean. That's great. And I'm here with Mark Billings, who's president of the company. Absolutely. Mark Billings, congratulations. Warm welcome to you. Great to have you. Thank you very much. Good to be with you, too. Okay. So perhaps, Sean, I'll just start with a brief history of the company and tell you what we do and how we're focused on it, what's our model and why we're doing what we do, okay? And uh, the name Oxico is, you know, Ox gold from, from Mexico, and uh, that's how we started. And uh, we had the opportunity to purchase a, a property with 23 historical mines there. They were all mined without any drilling and so on, just extremely rich, both in, in, in gold and silver. So that's where we got the name. But the, the idea of going there, like, if you're going to be in the mining business, you know, grade is everything. So, you know, you're going to have to take out a ton that's going to have certain value in it. There's going to be a cost attributed to that. So if you can be mining a ton worth 2,000 instead of 500 and your cost is 300, obviously your margins are a lot higher. So our whole approach and, and what we do is try to find the ton with the highest value per ton with the lowest capex to put it into production, okay? So that will come back to, to those the potential, potential of those mines in Mexico after. But one of our partners here uh, is from Colombia and he had worked for the past two presidents in Colombia. And he said, come down for about a you know a week and I'll introduce you to everybody. And I realized, you know, the level of contacts with governors and everything that he had. And that's where we discovered the Tantlum, you know. So uh, back to the model we're talking about, you know. So if you have an ounce of gold, right, your revenue per ton is going to be, say, 2,000 for sake of argument. But if you have 30 to 40% Tantlum, your rock value jumps to 50,000 a ton. And then we started realizing we could buy these tons for 15,000 and sell them for 50,000. So all of a sudden you're into a margin of $35,000 a ton and you don't own any equipment, you don't even own a pick and shovel. So, so that became pretty compelling as a concept because you know, when you look at the, at the world in mining, uh, most mines are below $1,000 a ton and the capex is in the millions. You know, and the lower your revenue per ton is, the higher the capex is to get that material out to make the same amount of money. But if you push the scale to something that's fifty thousand dollars a ton, you know, compared to the guy that's got a, a mine at a thousand dollars a ton, well, you know, you're looking at you know, you move one ton and they've got to move like fifty tons to make the same amount of money. So that's been the, the, the guiding light in what we do, and and then all of a sudden, and it, it took us a while to, to understand this, and 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 mostly, you know, in Colombia. Uh, we, we did maybe four or five different projects in the jungle, the Amazon, to find the right project, uh, which is a farm we ended up buying on the river that divides Venezuela and Colombia. It's literally, you know, 20, uh, 50 kilometers from an airport where you can fly to Bogota. So the infrastructure is right. You can find a great deposit in the middle of the jungle. It'll take you three years to, to make any money. But here it's in the right place within a strategic area. So, uh, you know, we've been working that for about two months now. We bought the farm. And there are about 20 different samples at the lab arriving in a few days. And this is a project where we wouldn't even have to buy from anybody else. So say we end up with that $50,000 a ton, it's ours. We don't have to buy it. So the margin is basically take it out of the ground, transport it, and sell it. You know, with very little, you know, maybe just a backhoe to, to help do that. So that, that's where we're going with this. And, and then we discovered that in this tantalum, you know, when... For everybody, tantalum is in every cell phone and every computer. And it's been historically mined in the Congo. About 60% of the tantalum is mined in the Congo. And uh, companies like Samsung and Apple hate to admit that they're buying from that country because of the her human rights issues and so on. So they sort of disguise that. So if sources become available in Colombia and Brazil, uh, Latin America, then everybody's all over this. You know, So the trick for us, is to diversify these sources per country so that we can meet the needs of these people that need feed all the time. So they don't want to be buying for you for one month and you can't supply the next one, okay? So so the tantalum is probably the highest value per ton. And lo and behold, 
now we start discovering that there's a bunch of errors in the tantalum itself, and recently the discovery of iridium. Okay, and I could keep talking for a while, but why don't I just stop now and see if there's any questions on that, and we'll get into iridium and we'll get into our trading business right after. Okay. Yeah, no, I want it, like it's incredible because you know you're talking about a mining company that's already pulling stuff out of the ground and, and doing distribution. I mean, it's it's incredible with at high revenue um, numbers. So I think uh, we mentioned in an original uh, news release, you talked about manganese being at two hundred dollars a ton. Is that still the case, or what, what are you seeing with the the cost of manganese right now? Actually, the uh, the manganese industry is uh, has the price has gone beyond that. Uh, you know, when we started looking at trading manganese about a year ago, yes, it was at about uh, those figures. And earlier this year, it was at about US uh, $400 a metric ton. And it, oh. it peaked recently at over $500 a metric ton. And, uh, you know, uh, what we've been able to do uh, as uh, Oxico, uh, I mean, as you indicated, is, is we're trying to break the, the traditional mold of a junior mining company, which is uh, you, you don't cash flow the operations, but you raise money. You try and find a, a deposit of merit and you either put that into production or sell it off. Uh, and that's what we intend to do with our Mexican property. But at the same time, about two years ago, we, we said, is there a way that we can cash flow the company at the same time? And mm -hmm. uh, we came uh, into contact through one of our shareholders with uh, uh, two gentlemen who were trading uh, these commodities, uh, specifically tantalum and niobium and manganese. And uh, one of them is an ex-Glencore trader. The other gentleman's family... Uh, were the largest traders of niobium in Europe. And so what we've been able to do is to establish with these two, uh, two gentlemen who work with us is a distribution network of uh, not just buyers, but also suppliers of these uh, various commodities so that we will uh, basically capture the whole value chain from the source of the material to the end buyer. Uh, in specifically with manganese, uh, we issued a press release uh, uh, several weeks ago indicating that we had begun to, uh, to cash flow our company we had begun to sell uh, manganese through uh, these distribution channels, and uh, it coincided with the price. The prices going up. Uh, we found that it's uh, very easy to find the uh, the buyers uh, for these commodities because we have this ex Glencore trader and this other gentleman who they've been in this business for a while. There's a lot of pent up demand uh, given the COVID situation. Uh, there's a lot of supply disruptions last year because of, of a lot of ports, specifically in Brazil, being closed. All that has had uh, upward price uh, uh, pressure. At the same time, the, the global economy is now trying to catch up for, for the missed, uh, you know, essentially the missed year uh, that was uh, you know, during the pandemic lockdowns. And all that is, uh, it's, it's fortuitous for us right now that we're in this business. Uh, the manganese sales that we've announced uh, uh, recently on, uh, on our news release of March 30th, we had initial sale of 15,000 metric tons to three customers in India, China, and the United Arab Emirates. And uh, two of those uh, uh, customers, each of them wants up to 60, 60, uh, thousand uh, metric tons per month. So that's mm -hmm. eight time increase, eight fold increase from what we initially sold. Uh, that's just testimony to the fact that this is a strong industry. And that's just one, one commodity, manganese. And as, as Pierre indicated, we're looking at tantalum, we're looking at niobium, and we're looking at some other uh, more exotic minerals like iridium. So it's all, all going very well for us. And we, what we want to do is continue to cash flow the company. And that will uh, give a return to our investors, obviously, and hopefully yeah. have a, an impact in the markets. And at the same time, we can use that cash flow for, you know, to, to grow that business, to do exploration on our Mexican property, uh, to dividend out at some point. I mean, it's all, uh, it's all very good. And it's, it's uh, you know, having uh, that cash flow uh, is, uh, enables us to do a lot of things that we couldn't do if we didn't have it. Brilliant. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to have me follow up on the numbers that Mark was mentioning yeah. in terms of manganese. Um, uh, Mark, you said that there's demand for, you know, each three of these countries um, is demanding 60,000 metric tons per month. That would be around 180,000 metric tons per month in total. And with the price of manganese being at around 400, are we looking at around, you know, 500 something million dollars a year? I mean, are we going to get close to that potential by the end of 2021 or do you see that coming into plans you know by q1 and q2 2022 well i mean you have to multiply that by the grade of manganese which is about 40 okay. percent so you have okay. that amount. i mean uh our challenge uh, we're still 250 million i would say then still, still. Uh, our, our challenge is to ramp up to those figures and okay. uh, uh what we can tell you is that the demand is definitely there uh we've secured supply sources in specifically in brazil uh, which is one of the largest manganese uh, 
uh, exporters. And so now our challenge is to deal with the logistics of uh, exporting uh, manganese from Brazil to those parties. And uh, what I can tell you is that we have the right uh, commodities traders who have extremely good relationships with the buyers and we are very close to the supply source. And that's uh, unlike a lot of the big commodities trading houses, which will which will buy uh, you know, from a port in a secure warehouse, make a very small margin and sell it off to a customer. What we're trying to do, like I said, is capture much more of that value chain. So if we can ramp up uh, you know, to you know, from 15 to 30 to 60 and beyond, uh, I mean, those figures uh, are, are definitely attainable. It just becomes a logistics exercise uh, on our part. And, uh, you know, COVID has presented some challenges with uh, uh, containers specifically. I mean, there's a shortage of those containers worldwide, but we've uh, addressed that issue. So what, what I can tell you on this call is that it's our intention to ramp up as quickly as possible the sale of not just manganese, but the other commodities with which we have access. Brilliant. Thank you. Sorry, Hammy, I had to interrupt you because um, we have eight months worth of questions here. <laughs> so, <laughs> you're prioritizing. To go on, Hammy, it's yours. <laughs> no, I mean, you, you make an, uh, a good point about, you know, these companies like Samsung and Apple and that, that they need to show that they're buying from trusted suppliers. So I think, um, you know, they can't just go to a mine in Brazil or the Congo and say, hey, we want to buy your magazine. They kind of need to go through a trusted supplier, you know, with all this ESG movement and all that. Can you kind of um, talk us a little bit the imp how, the importance of being a trusted supplier and what that means, um, you know, moving forward in the future with all these rare earths. Yeah, well, you know, uh, there's a press release that go out uh, probably Tuesday that we've become a member of the uh, International Trade Association for Niobium and Tantalum. And it's it's hard to get into these associations, but we've, Oxico is now a registered member. And doing that gives us access to all the buyers and everybody that's in the business because they know that we're an accredited uh, party to that association and we've also been accepted in another organization that's a rare earth organization where again all the buyers are in that organization mm -hmm. so you, you can't get in there at will you have to be referenced in and anyways we're to our traders we we're now members of those two organizations all right Excellent. so so that trust factor gets established there but you know it's it's really hard to uh, to establish yourself with the buyers uh, you know, it was difficult to do, and the, the traders helped us do that tremendously. But I tried it first, and you know, to break in there, you got to send them samples. There has to be low reactivity. They, you really got to know what you're doing. It takes a bit of time, but that heavy lifting has been done. So, in the tantalum niobium side, we could probably sell 200 tons a month right now. Wow. And if you start doing that, you know, at uh, 50,000 a ton, what is that? 10 million a month, five million dollar profit. Okay. So the buyers are there, they know us, we know them, the credibility is established. And for us, it's just getting geared up to be able to do that. Uh, we can buy it from others, but hopefully we'll sell it directly for our own property in Colombia. And from these properties, we just announced in Bolivia and Cote d'Ivoire, all right? So let, let's focus on that just for just one second. Because when you look, you know, what we've been buying would be say 30% tantalum. Here it's 60% tantalum. So one ton of tantalum today is 150,000. 60% is $90,000 a ton. Wow. If it's for our own property, it probably costs us $1,000 a ton, and you're looking at a margin of 80 to 90,000 when you sell it. So if you sell 100 tons of that a month, it's 8 million a month in your pocket. Wow. Okay. That's incredible. Now, the surprise, the total surprise, and let me deal with this because this is really the upside in the company in a big way, is this iridium that we found in the same week, both in Bolivia and in Cote d'Ivoire. Not a little bit of it, but 2.6 kilos of it in Bolivia, all right? So let's just do the math on that for one second, all right? Divide 2.6 kilos by 32 grams to find out how many ounces of iridium you have in this thing. The answer is you got 81 ounces of iridium. Multiply by the price of iridium, that's $6,400 an ounce, that's $515,000 a ton. Wow. That's, uh, <laughs> I mean, tr transfer that to gold equivalent, and you're, you're, you're talking about a bonanza, right? Divide <laughs> well, 518000 by the price of gold. Do it yourself. Tell me what the answer is. Hold on. I had a number here. I think it's around 280 ounces per ton or something gold, like that. Gold equivalent. Exactly. Yeah. Well, so that number. Ounces, not grams. Ounces. Like that's, ounces, yeah. <laughs> There's a mind boggling number, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. So 
when you look at that, okay, but can you sell it at that? Do you have to separate it or not? You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it's it's more complicated than looks, even if the value is there. So you can certainly sell that right away at the ninety thousand dollars and make eighty thousand bucks for doing it. Getting the iridium, you might have to separate it. Right. And let me establish now just a relationship between Oxico and another company that Mark and I are involved with, I call Central America Nickel. We mentioned that in a press release. And this company has uh, three PhDs in science on the board. We work with four different labs, and we have proprietary technology using ultrasound to separate metals. Okay, uh, so we're doing tests as we speak. Probably have the results tomorrow on separating iridium from the tantalum. But that way, you could take it out, sell your tantalum, and monetize the difference, which could be in the order of five hundred thousand dollars a ton. But if you only get fifty percent of it, can we live with two hundred fifty thousand a ton? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just trying to explain the relationships between these mm -hmm. companies. Uh, the process is based on something called ultrasound that fragments the grains of sand into nanoparticles, and whatever acid you use has much more surface contact area, and you digest everything out in one hour as opposed to 24 hours. So it's, it's really efficient. We've used it in nickel and a whole bunch of other things. But obviously, when you see tons like this, you want to get to that answer as quickly as possible. So we have weekly meetings with uh, three different labs, uh, different PhDs in chemistry that all come together and they do this testing for us every week. Okay, so Oxico is, a, is benefiting from that and will benefit from any plants that uh, Central America Nickel is going to acquire in the next year. So we're into buying refineries and so on that can, uh, you know, uh, crush uh, material and, and, and extract and separate these things. Central America Nickel is a registered bidder for North America Lithium here in, in the province of Quebec. And we've submitted, you know, that's a, a, a lithium plant that costs $450 million, but we look at it as a processing plant where we could bring in those materials and refine them and separate them. So we're we're a bidder in that plant, and obviously we were going to win it, then there's huge facility there for, for getting our people or into that and refining it and doing exactly what I'm talking about is separating these metals and increasing the value. Wow. Um, yeah. So you just answered one of my main questions about the technology. So this is a <laughs> um, this is this is a very environmentally friendly technology compared to traditional methods. That's that's what I understood from from reading a little bit about it. So it's a very desirable technology of extraction. Is that uh, is that correct to, to assume? Well, yeah, absolutely. So listen, if you can do if you can do that chemical reaction one hour as opposed to twenty four hours, right. Your environmental footprint will be one twenty fourth of anybody else. Your capex will be. 124th and it's not that linear but i'm just in, in the ballpark yeah. thing so you know and, and it's not that great an invention all we're doing is it's like chemical grinding what that ultrasound does you know if you go to the hospital you got a kidney stone mm -hmm. it goes ultrasound to break that stone so it can exit your system so think of doing that now in conventional mining where you take your ore you grind it you put in a big leach tank you put acid in there but if you put an ultrasound you fracture everything, create these micro bubbles that just tear the shit out of the material. Instead of one grain of sand, now you got thousands, and you can recover that in an hour. So it's pretty That's cool. Right. You know, we filed patents on that. We've done it on gold and silver, and there's also patents filed on that. So it's worked so far pretty well on everything we've done, including rare earths. So I'm very anxious to get these results for for the iridium and see what there is. You know, but no, yeah, for sure. Yeah, let me explain iridium in another way. Uh, since it's 40 times rarer than gold on the planet, um, it only happens when a, a you know asteroid hits hits the Earth, and that's where it gets crystallized and gets created but with that impact. Mm -hmm. uh, in Bolivia, where we are, there's four asteroids that hit that area that created these circumstances. You know, and uh, we've been seeing other projects loaded with uh, platinum group metals and so on, and, and big big numbers of those things. So uh, we're in negotiation with some other projects like that. And, we're very hopeful that we achieve these. You know, if you recovered half of that with ultrasound, I mean, it's ridiculous. You're, you know, yeah. the numbers are off the chart. But so, you know, when we saw that in Cote d'Ivoire, in the same way, Cote d'Ivoire had uh, 1,700 grams and Bolivia had 2,600 grams. So, I mean, the numbers are off the charts, you know. So, it's the first time we see that mm -hmm. and we understand the circumstances. And let's see how successful we get with the extraction. Excellent. Brilliant. Uh, just a quick question How close are you to? extracting and hopefully shipping iridium are we going to see a shipment in 2021 or do you reckon it's going to be 
in Q1 2022. Well, anything I mean, like you know what, look, you know, with this stuff, you want to do it as close as fast as possible, you know. So I can sell tons now and not get paid for reading the way they are. And, and I'll probably do that anyways, because there's a lot of it where it comes from. So we're into the ninety thousand dollars a ton if we sell the tenth one, which is you know, when you think of that compared to the manganese at uh, five hundred dollars a ton, if you're selling something for ninety thousand dollars, I mean you're you're looking at you know one container is is as much value as about fifty containers on the manganese, so you ought to be doing that right away. You know, so uh, yeah, we're going to be forcing that issue and selling those, but ideally, we would uh, I would say it'll probably take us. Uh, I don't know, maybe three months to be able to, 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 we'll know scientifically how to take the iridium out, probably, I would say, within three weeks, maybe sooner. And, and then we need to have a facility to do that. So you want to take that 10 tons that's worth, you know, 500,000 a ton, there's $5 million, and separate that out, even if you did, you know, two tons a day. So we could either contract a facility to do that, and, you know, we, we need leach tanks with ultrasounds in them, so we could build or rent and there's a few places that could handle this. We just get got to get the recipe right first. So we're on the recipe, but we're very optimistic we'll get it because it's worked for rare earths. It's worked for cesium and rubidium and a bunch of very exotic stuff so far. So I'll know in about a week. Excellent. Oh, wow. Okay. So we are on, I would say maybe in the next three months, as you said, maybe Q3 2021, we could. Yeah, yeah. I'd continue. like to do it before, but if we have a processing facility, you know, under our thumb, we're negotiating one right now. Like I said, we've been, we're lucky yeah. enough to do this North America lithium plant. I mean, that's huge, right? It's got, uh, it can do 3,500 tons a day of ore through that plant. It's got the labs, wow. huge chemical process. You can look that up. We're one of the bidders, and that'll be decided the next three weeks. So if we win that, then we've got our place to do all of this in a hurry, you know? How close and confident are you in terms of winning the bid on the North American lithium plant? I would say very confident right now. I mean, okay. There were six bidders and there's two left, the Australians and ourselves. Oh, wow. Well. Okay. And okay. my name is not, a, you know, O'Connor or anything like that. It's Pierre Gautier, and that works in Quebec. So they're, we're Quebec. Oh, yeah. so if, you know, if we, we have the money, we should win this, you know, and we, you know, so there we go. So we're, yes. we're, we're close. I think the governor announced it. We just got extended another month to June the 4th. Right. And, and, um, uh, we're very close to doing this, and then you know, Oxico would benefit in a big way from this. Nice. So June the fourth is the day that we look forward to in terms of North America. <laughs> before, that. before then, okay, brilliant. <laughs> well, I mean, I you know, you can kind of connect a few dots on that as well. Like Quebec wants to be a major player in you know EV batteries and recycling and, and metals and all that kind of stuff. So I mean, why why not partner with a Canadian company that's based in Quebec? I mean, I mean well, it just makes all the sense in the world to me. It, yeah. You know, yeah, well, I'll tell you how we looked at it initially because the lithium prices were pretty low and that's why the whole mm -hmm. thing was bankrupt. But uh, one of our board members had, who's a metallurgist in Central America, Nickel, had done an audit here in this plant for the government twice. And he knew the plant inside out. So he looked at it, hey, we could bring in nickel from uh, as a hydroxide and convert it into a sulfate that goes into batteries. So we actually have a deal signed with Tesla and their supplier in, the, in the China that makes all their cathodes. So... This is a, a big man's game right now, what we're playing with the Quebec government and uh, being in big players here. So to do their industrial strategies to bring in a battery manufacturer here, and they didn't have the nickel to do it. There's lithium here, there's graphite here, but there's no nickel. Mm -hmm. So for us to put on the table the fact that this plant could produce 100,000 tons of nickel sulfate, that nickel would accommodate 300,000 electric vehicles. And yeah, you know, so so... So all of a sudden, that becomes a major, major pond here in attracting a battery manufacturer. So that's our, that's our business case to the government. But with that, there's rare earths at the plant. There's equipment at the plant that can process rare earths. There's tantalum at the plant. So we're going to have all that facility to be able to help Oxypo refine its materials. Right, that's that's um, that's, that's an amazing. Uh, yeah, I mean, as we're talking, we just got a question. Did I just see a Tesla deal? <laughs> Someone commented. <laughs> well, I can is, tell that, you, is that true? I can tell you that we've been talking that for six months. <laughs> I can tell you we have a contract signed with their with their cathode manufacturer and Central America Nickel, and that's heavyweight stuff for this government right now. So, so okay. I'm telling you stuff that has nothing to do with uh, with uh, Oxford the other day. We're a private company. I can talk about that. 
But I can certainly tell you that, you know, I'm chairman of both companies, Mark's president of both companies. And there obviously be tremendous logic for, for taking, taking all that very rich stuff that I was finding out of the world and optimizing you know, the separation in that plan. That I can tell you. Oh, okay, so you've been in talks with Tesla for the last six months through that private company that you have. Obviously, Oxico would also be a beneficiary of those contracts, I would assume. Uh, that's <laughs> yes, yeah. The answer to that is uh, yes. You can say it in French. I will translate later. <laughs> that's that's a very that's the toughest question you like. But the answer to that is uh, is yes because we own the facility. And because of the relationship that we we've, we've created there, it allow, it's going to bring a lot of capital into the group uh, to develop all of that. And uh, and Oxico has some of the richest material around, so we want that in the plant yesterday to separate it. And uh, it gives us a huge facility, the lab, the manpower. I mean, the whole thing. So yeah, there'd be like two, three hundred employees in there by the time we get going on this thing. It's, it's, a, right. it's a massive endeavor. Okay. But yeah, no, for sure. there were six companies to bid this, and there's two left, and we're one of them. So let's see what happens. Nice. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, so yeah. go on, I mean. So just real quick on top of that. So like, mm. let's let's assume that you win this this project. Um, is there plans to like expand on that and like move and have them like in, you know other places in around the globe to kind of reduce the amount of you know shipping required, or is this like you know this facility is going to be able to handle the load of everything that you guys are pulling out of the ground? You're yeah, absolutely asking the right questions okay <laughs> okay so 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 this plant is there and it won't move it's a huge processing facility but uh, this ultrasound technology we've created i mean uh, we're negotiating now with uh, five different countries because this company also has a massive central america massive rare earth deposit thanks mark he's got to go so he's on his way but i'll continue with you guys bye mark bye mark <laughs> thanks mark so, so yeah, so this ultrasound, because of the, uh, of the very low market cap of it, it can be built. And, you know, you build a one ton an hour plant. And if you do 24 tons a day, and those tons happen to be worth $100,000, well, there you go. You, it's two and a half million a day. So, so, yeah, because of the low capex, because of the low environmental footprint, there's a lot of interest in this technology. I've we spoke with Johnson, Matthew, a whole bunch of people that want this in different places. Okay. And and certainly, you know, when you bring it into a country, be it Colombia, anywhere else, and you're upgrading the product locally like that, I mean, it's phenomenal. So, yeah, so at the end of the day, we could bring a plant to the deposit and just do it on, on the site because it doesn't have to be a big plant because the value percentage. Mm -hmm. I mean, think of it. If you did two tons a day, one ton in the morning, one ton in the afternoon, and, and half a million dollars a ton, it's a million dollars a day. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's incredible. <laughs> Okay. And like, let's, yeah, those those numbers are massive. So let's talk about like the partnership with the mines. Like, can you kind of walk through like the importance? Like, because I know you retain a certain amount of of the gross profit, and the rest yeah. kind of goes back to the mines. So can you talk about the importance of that, and you know those relationships that are built, and how those kind of work together? Yeah, you know, so we, there's two relationships. One, we could be a trader and simply buy the material from the mine. You know, like there's a lot of indigenous communities. That you pay them so much a ton and they'll get 20 people in the field and they'll produce pan concentrate tons to give you that product, okay? So that's one model where you're just buying it for 10,000 a ton and selling it for 30 or 50, whatever whatever it's gonna be. Uh, the higher the grade of it, the more you wanna be the owner of it. So this trading model is really cool because, you know, as opposed to expiration, you're shown product that people need to sell all over the place and if you buy it, all of a sudden, you see somebody give you a product at 59% tantrum, which is twice the greater anywhere else. Well, when that happens, why not become a co-owner of that mine because it's so rich, especially if it has other products in it, you know, like iridium, et cetera. So the two last joint ventures we sign is that we, we become co-owners with them in a joint venture. And uh, it's typically like a 60-40 joint venture. And therefore, if we sell something for 100000 we get 60000 they get 40000 Okay, but then what I do is I always put a clause in there to try and increase my interest to 85,000, to 85% uh, of the product sold. So I don't mind, like in, in the last deal, I think it's got that extra 25 points would cost me 350,000 US. But if we can separate it, that's one ton pays for it. So you might as well, okay. you know, might as well have that in writing to be able to do that, right? Mm -hmm. 
So our process is when we get this material, we analyze it in our labs in Canada, and right away we start ultrasound on it to see what we recover, okay? But it starts with this analysis of these materials in Canada because a lot of these labs in these other countries may not be able to analyze it correctly and get iridium and that's a false reading. So we get all that confirmed here. So ideally, we try and be fair with the partners as we put up the capital, but there's, you know, what we do, we have this partner that does satellite imagery interpretation on the vegetation in the ground. And, you know, when there's heavy metals like in the ground, 50% petrol, not much rose in that stuff. So your vegetation is totally different. So if you have a marker place where that material is, you see what the vegetation signature is, then you can find more like that on the property. We've been doing that for two months in Colombia on the farm we bought, and not all the samples are coming in here to Montreal. And I can tell you the model works pretty good. Amazing. And these are all open pit mines too, are they, are they not? Or Absolutely. I would never touch an underground mine ever in my life. Never. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's good to know. Never. That's amazing. Never. You know, what I want is open pit and give me the value per ton of the rock and where it's the highest, that's where I want. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, it makes sense because, yeah, underground mines, are, the cost to produce is you know, uh, astronomical uh, compared, right? I've owned some in the past. and just forget that. I mean, it's, it's, mm -hmm. You know, you have to put your shaft deeper down all the time to get access to your ore. I mean, it's it's mm -hmm. a, so you know, so, yeah. And then you you touched on you know the gold and silver properties that you have in in Mexico. So I can only kind of you know connect kind of where everything's going along. Like you're going to generate this cash flow now to be able to you know uh, work on those properties. Can you kind of talk us through a little bit of that as well? Sure, I can. Sure, I can. You know, you know this 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 whole project was the embarrassment of riches. You know, you got 23 mines there that. We're mine historically, you don't even know where to go, you know. But uh, we made the a lot announcement about six months ago that one of the key mines that we didn't have was right in the middle of our whole block there called La Franca mine. Mm -hmm. And it had been sampled by our geologists uh, at about, you know, uh, between two two and four kilos of silver. And those, that's a, those are big numbers, along with about 15 to 25 grams of gold. So there's a ton worth in the thousands, a couple of thousand dollars there, between 2,000 and 4,000. So that really fits with that criteria. And this Frank of mine is on the side of a hill. It's an addict. We've sampled, the, you know, so they, what, what the old guys used to do is go in and mine the, the quartz vein. But the hanging walls are sulfide rocks that are gray and with little, little quartz veins in it, and they never bother. And it's in these breaches that we found these crazy numbers, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, well, you know, two to four thousand dollars a ton in the in the gold business or silver business are gigantic numbers. There's still a fraction of the fifty thousand dollars a ton that we're talking yeah. about in tantalum, you know. So uh, now that we finally, you know, have nailed down the tantalum model, and there's no capex really in that model, you know, we're doing that. But this is a great cash flow opportunity for gold and silver. Mm -hmm. So uh, either I'm going to joint venture that out. Or get back and do it ourselves, and you know, start creating cash flow from there. Because, you know, we could do a bulk sample, take that out, and you know, if we can collect four thousand, three to four thousand dollars a ton just by taking it out, maybe grinding it and selling it. I mean, that's pretty cool. That's what was done historically on this property for about a hundred years. So, you know, that's I wouldn't say that's you know, although that's the name of our company. That's how we started. That's not the main value driver, you know. Right. Right. You know, let's go to the value per ton that's the highest, all right? And, uh, right now, that's the, the tantrum with the iridium in it and two different places. And I think you'll see more announcements, more acquisitions, more deals in the next couple of weeks from us on that side. We're really, really focused in on that. Yeah, excellent. Brilliant. And Pierre, talking about tantalum, I think, you know, a couple of months ago, what was it, I mean, October, I think we were discussing when the news came out of Apple, you know, trying to develop a new EV. And then the main partner that they had in Japan was Toshiba. And they were developing a tantalum-based battery because tantalum is denser. It's able yeah. to provide that um, capability of fast charging, very fast charging. So in 15 minutes, zero to 100 percent. And they had the word tantalum in it. And then me and Hammy were trying to connect um, Apple's EV battery to <laughs> tantalum that yeah. Oxical Resources has. Yeah. Now, uh, besides speculation, are you thinking of perhaps partnering because you have a huge uh, amounts of tantalum and high grade ones? Yeah. Are you thinking of connecting and partnering with any EV manufacturer perhaps or to Yeah, for example? yeah we, we should go that next step. You know, it, it, the nice part of what we've done, and I, I can't stress how, how important this is enough is to have it in different places, okay? You know, so we, you know, we joint ventured with Ken 
in the Congo. So we have a tantrum mine that's very rich in the Congo. That has been delayed because obtaining an export permit and obtaining something, you know, the qualifi qualification for ethical mining out of an organization in London. And to get that, you need your export permit, which we'll have in about a week. And then we'll have right away the ethical mining status as a clean company out of the Congo. And we've got all kinds of buyers for that material, but it's just been delayed because of obtaining these permits has been longer than we thought, but we're there now in terms of getting it. So that project can kick off. It's been sampled. It's large. There's a lot of it there. But now add Bolivia, add Colombia, add Brazil, add Cote d'Ivoire. We're talking about Tetlam from five different countries. You know? so, so when you're talking, at a, so that can establish us with the buyers as, as the preferred long-term supplier. Because if there's a revolution in one country, we can supply it from the other. And, you know, so, so it puts us in a phenomenal position. So, so it's taken a while to get to this point. But when you call these large companies, you tell them, look, we can come here from these five countries. They absolutely love it. Because that doesn't, it doesn't exist out there. These things are hard to find. But we've been plugging away for two, three years now and uh, end up in a very, very good position to, to make that representation to major buyers. Brilliant. So and in Hammy, we can assume that Oxico is a junior mining company, but it's more like it's behaving more like a senior and a large mining company. You have the networking, you have the distribution, and um, you have the mines and diversified sort of supply resources. And you know, you have you know basically you know a junior is acting like a major mining company. Yeah, and through our associate company, access to tremendous technology and separating these metals and, and optimizing the value of return. You know, you talk about Tantum. I'll give you an example, okay? So, you know, let, let the price, you know, the price per kilo, I think it's $150 a kilo right now, okay? For a concentrate of 30 to 60% Tantum, okay? If you could make that 99% pure Tantum, the price is $500 a kilo. Oh. Nice. Okay, so we can sell and make X, and we can process and refine and make five times X. Mm. That's incredible. Added value. So when I say that, I could show you 50 different tests we've done on how to do that. Yeah. Okay? Prudent. And all of a sudden, if we get a plant where we can do it in size, you'll see this happen. So all of this sort of is contingent on you bidding that and winning the bid on the North American lithium plant in, in Quebec. Is that correct? Well, you know, it, it, it would facilitate things, but, you know, if we don't win, there's other plants we're looking at that... that uh, okay. And you don't need something that big, by the way, because this stuff is so rich. So if, if you could buy a plant, you know, this plant, North American lithium, is 3,500 tons a day. But if you had a plant you could buy that does 10 tons a day, and you're doing that with some of these rich ores, it's so profitable, it's ridiculous, you know? So, yeah. so that's the whole point. Low capex, high value all the time, you know? Absolutely. No, 100%. And I think the diversification is important. Like you said, you know, there's an issue in one country, and that, that's what these buyers want. They want to know that they're going to be able to get what yeah. they ask for month over month over month because they're going to need it. Like, you know, if all of a sudden they come to you and you say, oh, no, sorry, we can't provide that this month, well, then that's putting their manufacturing, that's putting their production, uh, pushing it back, and they have to scramble around and try and find yeah. some. So I think, you know, just that trust is, is very important. I think investors really need to realize that. Yeah, I can tell you that, uh, you know, about a year and a half ago, we didn't know where to call and who to sell to, mm -hmm. right? But since we started with our, our traders in Germany and in Switzerland and so on, um, you know, we could sell two to three hundred tons a month immediately. Okay, we just mm -hmm. had to be geared up and fill that order, and it's not out there. It's not really out there. So it's hard to get. It's hard to get from the right places. And on top of it, there's a further constraint that it has to be low radioactivity. So there's usually thorium and uranium, uranium in these deposits. And if you've got more than, you know, 0.1% of those two, you can't sell them. Okay, the beauty of this ultrasound, when we do it, it takes that stuff out and cleans it up at the same time. So, so you know, there, there's a lot of work that's gone into this. I think that'll, that'll materialize in the marketplace as we get going here. Yeah. Brilliant, thank well, you so much. Um, I also wanted to mention, you know, on the macro level, uh, we know China has access to the, you know, largest portion of the rare earth minerals you know um resources in the world and they've been using it as a geopolitical force so what the us has done especially president biden coming into administration um taking taking the office is that he's put an extra emphasis on cooperating with friendlier countries with access to a lot of 
rare earth mineral resources. And obviously, Oxico and Canada is, is a prime example of how they can, you know, meet the demand that they have in North America. Do you think that will help um, Oxico sort of accelerate its growth into 2021 and perhaps 2022? And how would it do that? You have no idea. That's a great question. Love the question. <laughs> Well, I've really studied this in both Central America and Nickel with various deposits uh, in the Congo and Oxico with his critical minerals. I mean, between the two companies, I met Trump a year ago face to face and talked to him about this exact issue. All right. One on one in his golf club. <laughs> on a Saturday. Okay. And, uh, and unfortunately, he was gonna. He jumped all over this, but he got impeached on the Monday after, so he lost attention on this file. He, he dropped that file. <laughs> <on this file. laughs> okay. All right. But uh, I took it up the chain in Washington and got to meet him on this because it is a huge issue, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, this this now plant is very much part of this in a huge way. We own a, a very very rich earth deposit in the Congo. And it runs, uh, you know, some of these minerals in there, like neodymium. I don't know if you've heard of that. That goes into to batteries for electric vehicles and, and, and magnets. I'm sorry, not into batteries, but into magnets for electric vehicles and to solar energy. And uh, I don't know if you looked at Mountain Pass in the States. That's the only producer of rares in the States. Well, they have 1% neodymium in the ground. We've got 12. Oh. And they send their concentrates to China for processing. We This plant... <clears throat> will be dedicated in a large part to refining rares and selling them in an el elemental form. These are rares that we own in the Congo, rares that Oxico has in its deposits in many places. So that fits that whole footprint. So there was a, I've been at, has been my main driver in the last two years, but there's a, a strategy document put out by the U.S. two years ago called the Critical Mineral uh, Supply Chain and Processing of Rares. So not only are there no rares in the States, but they've signed the alliances with Canada. But Canada's got rares, right? Just about in the pole north, very low grade, very expensive to, to put into production. So with this tantalum stuff we have, there's always a series of rare earths in there. So thus the iridium that's not really a rare earth, but the, the lanthanum, the iridium, a lot of them are in those tantalum deposits as well. Mm -hmm. And we have the stuff out of the Congo. So. So, and we can bring in ultrasound plants to do this in different places. So, so that's a niche at the end of the day that collectively Oxico and Ken would love to occupy. I, I can tell you this, that with this acquisition, without it, you will see a plant in Quebec here refining all these rare earths and supplying to the U.S. market. The tons in the Congo we have are running $20,000 a ton of, of, of these selected rare earths. And the deposit itself that now has rare earths as well. So. So you know, it's, it, this has been a serious focus for us for the last couple of years. And uh, so if we get that plan, we'll be very active on this. Well, we are looking forward to that. And uh, I, I'm telling you, we are all now looking forward to June 4th or we see when that bidding process is going to go <laughs> through. Because um, as you said, I think that process of you know adding value and doing that refining of these rare earth minerals is even more crucial than exploration and finding and distributing these rare earth minerals. So... Uh, you know, as you said, is extremely crucial for our critical supply chain of minerals in North America and in the Western Hemisphere, I would say even so. You know, what? you know, I was reading an article in the Telegraph last weekend where uh, Britain is dying to do a deal with somebody who can supply them. Right now, Australia is about the only place where you can get them. Uh, but uh, I've, we've hired a consultant that was from the U.S. Defense for about 10 years, who's talking to various governments about all of this. So when we when I met Trump, I mean, there, if you look at the U.S. study on critical minerals, there's 34 different critical minerals that they need. And there's a neat chart I could send it to you that shows where they come from and how much of it is 100% imported, you know. And of the, of the, when I presented to Trump, I said, of the 34, we've got 23 of them under our control. So I said to him, you know, we could do a mineral alliance in countries that are friendly to the U.S., Guatemala, uh, Colombia. Uh, Brazil, you know, and supply you, you know, uh, with an alliance of these countries. And why don't you help me fund all this? And I'll tie you up on the supply for the next 20 years. That was my pitch. In two minutes. <laughs> and I said, you look like a genius because you'll solve all the problems. You'll, you'll break the China hold on all this stuff. That was essentially yeah. my pitch thing. You know? And I can help you do that. I've got the processing and I've got the minerals. I got 24 of the 33 th 32 things that you need. Let's go. 
He says, send me the whole pitch immediately to Mar Lago, and uh, I'll call you back uh, early in the week. And then he got impeached. <laughs> well, I'm sure President Biden coming into office, he's going to because you know he would want to do the same thing. I don't think his strategy and his policy has changed. So, you know, um, I'm I'm sure a similar push towards President. Maybe you have to go to Washington and meet President Biden as well. I'm sure he would be more well, welcoming and more listening. Well, you know what? You're right. And this consultant I hired was part of the Biden administration, Defense Department, when Obama okay. was in power at that time. So he's really connected to the current administration. So we're we're working pretty hard on that. We're working with the with politics in Ottawa. The, I can tell you the Minister of Natural Resources, the Defense Department. Uh, same thing with, uh, I've talked to the Defense Department in the state. So we've been chasing them down this thing for a while. Okay, so it's, it's not a new effort. It's been going on for two years. Excellent. Wow. Well, it seems that uh, Oxco is at that point of inflection. And so, yeah. I mean, I don't want to take too much more of your time, uh, but 100%. maybe just give us like a final, um, you know, couple minutes uh, to, to address the shareholders that maybe current shareholders or they're looking to invest in Oxco and, and why you think, you know, they should be investing in Oxico uh, today. Well, you know, like I said, I, I think we'll have the value per ton higher than anybody in the business in the world. And if our value per ton is, 10 times or 50 times higher than anybody else, our capex is that much lower and, and our margins are that much higher. So there's less dilution in that kind of a company than a company that's trying to mine large volumes of low grade ore. Okay, that, you know, you gotta move so much material to get there. You know? so, so that's been my emphasis all the time. And with recent press releases, if you do the math, you can see what I'm talking about. And so I look forward to, to a lot more of that. And, and you know, we've been doing this uh, research now for about three years with ultrasound, and uh, we're at the point now of going commercial with it in different places and uh, accommodating some of that rich ore that, that Oxygo has, you know. So I think you're going to see the combination of rich ore in the ground and science come together and create tremendous value for the shareholders. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And as you mentioned and alluded to it, we are going to see a lot of developments coming up in the next couple of months. Yeah. And we all looking forward to it. It was one of the best 45 minutes that we've spent with the CEO. It was yeah. a pleasure. And we say, you know, a mining company will not be the hottest trend, but um, it is one of the most exciting companies um, that we have and we speak about because of the potential um, that you have in terms of rare earth minerals and the important role that you play in it. Uh, Pierre, thank you so much again for joining us. It was an absolute pleasure speaking to you. Yeah. And uh, hopefully we can have you soon uh, back on the show um, once yeah. you win the bid on, on the North yeah. American lithium plant. Yeah, I'd be happy to do this at your convenience. So maybe once a month or, you know, when things are happening. And if you or if there's an important release that comes out and you think you want to organize something like this, just let me know. We'll do it. OK, 100 awesome. percent. So we are going to see you more often. Thank you so much, Pierre. Thank you so much to everyone who tuned in. We will see you all in the next one. Cheers. Bye bye. Thank you.